Feel free to turn with me now to 1 Thessalonians. We're going to be reading in chapter 2. This passage we're about to read actually touches on some themes that we've already hit in the series, specifically real thanksgiving and real witness. But this text is unique because its primary focus is one of suffering. It's one of persecution. In fact, Paul does something here that seems outrageous. He is thanking God. He bursts into thanksgiving to God, knowing full well the Thessalonians are suffering. Let me read 1 Thessalonians 2, starting with verse 13. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but is what it really is, the Word of God, which is at work in you, believers. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out and displeased God and oppose all mankind." by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they might be saved, so as always to fill up the measure of their sins. But God's wrath has come upon them at last. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I just ask right now that you would anoint the preaching of your word. Would you anoint the ears of these, your dear ones, to hear what you are seeking to say to them this morning, and that, Lord, you would receive glory. In Jesus' name, amen. April 24th, 1944. The world is at war. German torpedo boats are prowling the waters of the English Channel searching for targets of opportunity. Almost by chance, they come across a radio frequency that has a high level of radio chatter. And under the cover of darkness, these German torpedo boats follow the signal to the coast of England. And much to their surprise and delight, they come upon a long convoy of American landing craft. Well, before the American commanders even know what has hit them, two of the ships have sunk and a third one is on fire. Those ships took with them material, tanks, and men. It was exercise tiger. It was supposed to be simply a training mission. And it ended up taking the lives of 749 American troops, their worst defeat since Pearl Harbor. And it brought untold pain and suffering to the families of those men. Now, in spite of this tragedy, there are people today actually thousands upon thousands who are grateful, grateful that this happened. Monuments are still being erected to honor these men and thank their families, not simply for their sacrifice, but for what their suffering revealed. How could this be? How could something that brought so much pain, so much discouragement, actually be a source of gratitude and thanksgiving to another group of people. Well, the thankful ones in this story have the benefit of history. They know now that Exercise Tiger was a practice invasion for D-Day. The Nazi attack and the suffering that it caused revealed serious weaknesses in the American plan and the American forces. And as a result, the military made significant changes to both their tactics and their training. 
just in time for the Normandy invasion. One historian said this, if it weren't for the suffering of Exercise Tiger, D-Day would have cost 10 times more lives. And in fact, it might have failed altogether. No wonder people are grateful. Well, something similar is going on in the Thessalonian church. They are suffering persecution. And the Apostle Paul is thanking God. At first glance, this just seems bizarre. But the Apostle Paul isn't thankful that they're in pain. He's not taking delight in the fact that they're suffering. No, Paul is seeking to help them see that their suffering reveals something. Their suffering reveals something significant. Not serious weakness, but actually serious strength. It causes Paul to thank God, to thank Him constantly. It's a truth that at first seems outrageous, but actually encouraged the Thessalonians. And I believe God wants to encourage us as well. It's this. Persecution comforts believers. Persecution comforts believers. This is a radical idea. How is this possible? How does this strike you? When you hear that persecution comforts believers, where you've suffered for the gospel, is that something that comforts you? Now, just so we're clear, persecution is, does not mean being opposed for being self-righteous, being angry, being arrogant, being sinful. That's not persecution. Persecution is not when you cut somebody off in traffic and they give you some kind of gesture. That's not persecution. Persecution is not being fired for your job because you're watching YouTube videos, even if they are Christian YouTube videos, instead of serving your customers. That's not persecution. That's something else entirely. That's a different message. Not this message. Now, persecution means suffering for Christ. We don't go out looking for it. It comes to us because we're identified with Jesus. Our culture tells us, avoid suffering. Avoid suffering at all costs. That's not Paul's perspective here. He wants the Thessalonians to understand persecution is a source of comfort. Persecution can actually comfort you, Thessalonians, and Covenant Fellowship. 